Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. So I will start by saying a um, few things about me because I I've graduated in Romania, um, the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, and then I started my first PhD there with uh, the topic entitled in my interest was uh, all, always about dairy filaria in dogs. And after I finished, I came in Naples. So we collaborate for my first PhD. And then, then we started my second PhD here and the European College. So in this way was born uh, this collaboration. And of course, I've continued with Dyrofilaria in dogs. And I will briefly summarize some, some, some of the studies. Uh, which involves immune response, diagnosis, and control. And I uh, enhanced my, my focus as well at uh, babesiosis in dogs, because in Romania, it's endemic for both pathogens, Dyrofilaria and Babesia. So we started to identify some um, Babesia species. And then, uh, interestingly, I found here some clinical uh, cases of dogs infected with Babesia gibsoni, but as well some um, some um, cases with uh, Dyrofila repes infection in cats with uh, aberrant localizations. I will uh, move on because everybody knows uh, about Dyrofila repes nemitis. They are worldwide spread. But uh, the idea, uh, the first idea was to look on the CNOT test and um, try to uh, find out another solution other than, uh, than formalin. So we were thinking to use, instead of formalin, 2% acetic acid, uh, glacial acetic acid, 2% both of them, saponin and distilled water and see what is happening. We included uh, 61 dogs. We collaborated with the University of Parma and uh, we performed all the modified notes in the, in, in the same way that we all know. Um, and then we took 10 microfilars of uh, each five reagents and uh, complete the measurements uh, regarding the body length and the width. Of, of course, uh, all the morphometric analyses were uh, were performed accordingly, and for uh, the confirmation of the antigen of the arachnoidomitis, we use the antigen test PET check. So we concluded with 90 blood samples in the lab one, which had the arachnoidomitis, 10 arachnoidomitis um, blood samples, nine with Dyrofilaria repens and 18 with Dyrofilaria imitis and 24 with Dyrofilaria repens in, in concern of the lab two. As you can see here, uh, the readability of the slides with all the solutions were pretty much okay. Uh, the E is the distilled water, the, the last one which have interest and we will see further. We compared as well the modified knot test uh, based on the mean and land, uh, we, uh, we noticed some, uh, some differences uh, between, uh, between repes and images, but as well between um, the two labs. Um, actually, uh, the differences in the microfilar measurements between the two labs we cannot be fully explained. And I will tell you this, perhaps uh, would be the company of the formalin that we, we purchased um, or other reasons. But of course, all these um, solutions actually shorter the microfilaria, both of them represent imitis, uh, besides distilled water, uh, which maintained the morphological features, but as well the measurements. So uh, in the end, the length and the width were reduced by all, all of them in different uh, levels, uh, mostly probable for a pronounced parasite uh, dehydration. And see here some images with the morphological features of the microfilaria, 
which were maintained pretty much okay for all the um, for all the solutions used and in the in the end uh, we can conclude we concluded on this study that all the solutions could be suitable and safe alternatives for formalin uh, in order to identify the uh, identify the circulating microfilaria in clinical settings with knot test but the distilled water performs the best in maintaining of microfilaria uh, dimensions which are of course essential for species differentiation of dirofilaria. Then with again the University of Parma in Salamanca, but as well the Beringer, we had this study uh, that we looked inside of the biology diagnosis and immune response to dirofilaria rabies in the in, in dogs. And we actually, with the help of Beringer uh, in France. We conducted this experimental infection and then the necropsy. And then we looked actually for the early diagnosis of dirofilaria repens by using knot and molecular analysis and, of course, serology. Um, I, will, um, I will step on this. Uh, the, as I said, the experimental infection was in Lyon. Uh, we used uh, the days of the analysis at minus 5, 58, 91, 121, until 281, the last study days. And we performed the modified knot test just in, uh, on days 220, 245, and 281. And the molecular analysis uh, before the experimental infection on days 220, uh, 245 and the last day 281. After that, we conducted the uh, serological analysis. Uh, we used, as, um, in fact, this uh, non-commercial ELISA in the past uh, when we wanted to detect the exposure of dirofilaria in humans in Romania and uh, we detect the EGG antibody response using the dirofilar somatic antigens and as well the response of Volbachia. Uh, for the molecular analysis, we use the protocols that are now in the literature, but we actually uh, observed that the protocol by uh, B, the Rishnu, were, uh, was more sensible than JOIA because detected more positive samples. If we are looking shortly on the results, uh, we had on a modified knot test 245, the first uh, patent infection with 60%, and then the multiplex PCR uh, with the, the B protocol with the Rishnu in the um, 245 and 50%. The serological uh, diagnosis were uh, really interesting because uh, uh, started on um, a day uh, 50, 58 and then continue uh, with the increase of the levels on uh, day 281. And here we compared actually the sensitivity of molecular and serological analysis uh, with the CNOT test outcome. Uh, we, we saw that on day 245, uh, we had uh, the knot with 13 positive dogs, 15 with the B protocol, and then with ELISA, 18, and 10 uh, dogs were reacted at Volbachia. Uh, here was the overall key agreement between CNOT and uh, PCR protocol that was increasing, showing the, the same increasing throughout the study, reaching uh, um, the highest level on the last study days. These are some um, images with uh, after the necropsy with some ad uh, adults that we found here as well. And uh, practically, this study um, shown that currently the most commonly used diagnostic indeed is CNOT, but it's prone to false negative results. 
that uh, results would suggest that both PCR protocols are able to detect infection earlier than the CNOT test. And all of the 12 dogs that were CNOT negative DNA positive on day 220 became CNOT positive by the end of the study, as did the remaining four dogs that were CNOT negative and DNA positive on day uh, 245. And actually, we uh, underlined that this is the first report of EGG response against Vorbachia in Eurofluorine Rebus experimental infected dogs, and uh, that the serological test performed in the first study should first be evaluated for cross reactions with Rebus and other non pathogenic filarial uh, infections because uh, we used in the model of experimental infections, but would be create to be used as well in the natural uh, infected dogs. Uh, we highlighted as well that in the antibody response developed uh, before the onset of the pandemic and steadily increases with time. On the last day, very important, 90% 90 of, 90 of the infected dogs were seropositive on anti dirofilaria weapons. Mm, here there are some uh, some information from the literature that actually describe a group of uh, proteins uh, from dirofilaria rapins ranging in a sort of uh, levels of key daltons, but are specifically recognized by the sera from human patients with subcutaneous dirofilariosis. So actually, was the um, the the idea to start to look what is going on, on on dogs in terms of the immune response of dirofilaria rapids. So we can conclude that uh, definitely the clinical knowledge of rapids must be always associated with the knowledge of the biology in the life cycle of the parasite. As we know, the development of the serological test for rapids infection could be promising for application in epidemiological studies and as an aid in the diagnosis of infection in dogs, in particular for oral infections without microfilaria. In fact, uh, further studies um, look for the evaluate, to evaluate the present test in terms of the specificity, as I said before, uh, given the risk of the cross reactivity, uh, and to identify specific immune active proteins of the adult parasites, which is a project that we are working now, and of course, we are in progress another study, and we want to evaluate the follow-up of, uh, of a therapy uh, that we applied on um, dogs that are naturally infected with Darofila rapids and imidis, actually mix of this in a shelter. Then uh, I said that I uh, looked, my, uh, my interest was focusing as well on the Babesia. So we complete a study uh, with some samples uh, collected from, um, from Romania. And we wanted to see the occurrence of the Babesia species and as well on the, uh, on the ticks that were present in the, um, on the coat of the dogs. So we screened all the animals for Babesia, for uh, hepatozone, and um, uh, the same thing were, was performed for the ticks that we found. Briefly, uh, we identified morphologically uh, the species of the ticks. So it was 120 uh, ticks as Ixodes ricinus. 67 Dermacentor reticulatus and three Rhipicephalus sanguineus. Regarding the, the, the pathogens, Babesia canis was the, the famous, the VIP, because we had 94% of the prevalence. Vogeli was 3%. And the, the surprise of this study was to find uh, Babesia rossi in the blood of the dogs. So now we are looking for the vector in Europe, for other canids that might act uh, as vectors in the biological cycle on Babesia rossi, because uh, really was a surprise, especially that the dog was, um, was symptomatic and were two dogs and the other died. 
Then I said first that uh, I looked on Babesia here in uh, in Naples. So we uh, we found a dog that unfor unfortunately not only Babesia gibsoni but also Lishmania infatum, and this um, complicated a bit the the symptomatology. In the end, uh, after all the um, follow up at the level of the blood works and um, on the IFA test for, for Leishmania in PCR for Babesia Gibsoni, we treated her uh, and we uh, actually... Uh, oh, sorry, Antonio, if you close your microphone. And um, we follow up as well in the um, abdominal ultrasound, um, the spleen which was enlarged all the time. We are still uh, uh, follow up uh, the Diana because she is now in um, in a cure for Leishmania. Uh, here are some some photos of Babesia Gibsoni from the blood smear test. And uh, laboratory analysis uh, showed that uh, Lishmania um, um, occurred with a high uh, level of the antibodies, and as well the positivity of the Babesia Gibson, even if uh, even if uh, we treat it. Um, the abdominal ultrasound remained as uh, the same. In, um, in the last uh, months of 2021. Actually here was, um, was removing the, the mass uh, that had on the eyelid of the, of the eye. And now it's, it's okay because it was the uh, mass of cystic with liquid. So no worry for tumors. And, but still um, here in, in Naples, actually we are wondering why it's, Babesia gives only a no large Babesia, for example. So we need some uh, screening for identification of uh, ticks that are here around. Uh, Babesia gives only indeed was identified here in Southern Italy by Professor Veneziano in hunting dogs with a uh, low prevalence. And, but we know that uh, the most affected um, breeds of the dogs are American Pitbull ter Terriers. Uh, similar with our case. No history traveling and the dog had never received a blood transfusion. So in, in the conclusion, uh, the awareness should be raised in case of co-infection in Leishmaniosis, taking into account the possibility of the occurrence of glomerular disease in Babesia Gibson infected dogs. And what was interesting for me that and this paper showed that azotemia and proteinuria in dogs uh, uh, were present only in the dogs infected with Babesia gibsoni. So we are trying to figure out now uh, those which was part of Leishmania and uh, which part of Babesia gibsoni. And my research, I mean, the other study that I, um, I performed last year was just, uh, um, we found a, a cat, a male, that actually under the sterilization, we found uh, in the testicle dirofilar repens. And uh, more interesting was that the cat was microfilaria, knowing that 20% of the dogs infected with repens anemides are amicrofilariamic. And that's it. Thank you very much. I hope was not out of time. <laughs>